welcome to the farm kitchen. Today, I'm going to make chicken pot pie. It's something I try to make a lot this time of year. I make it a lot in the winter, but I especially like it this time of year because I can uh, get vegetables right from the garden as opposed to using it dried. I will dry whatever vegetables I have left and we'll have it throughout the winter, but something a little bit nicer about having it fresh. So we'll start now. I always, um, for the summer chicken pot pie, I do fresh celery, but then you notice I'm not throwing away the celery tops. I will dehydrate those and that will be part of my spice mixture that I'll use for our winter pot pie. So I'll use the celery tops and then some dried sage and dried onions. So almost everything I'm doing today, I will save part of it to put in the dehydrator for pot pie again this winter. So there'll be a lot less work to do this winter. So to make a uh, chicken pot pie, you start with cutting up um, your celery and then I'll move on to the onions and the carrots. This is what the French call mise en poids. It's having uh, everything here that you would need for what you're cooking. I try to use as much stuff that we grow on the farm as possible. It just tastes better and there's just a sort of sense of pride in the fact that it came from what we grew ourselves. It's funny to see the little plant that you that you put in the ground or the seed that you put in the ground in the spring. Come September, which it is right now, we're having dinner. It's wonderful. There's something really amazing about that. So I'm not going to probably use all this celery here. We're only making a uh, chicken pot pie for the four of us, so I don't need a, a huge portion. So that's probably enough celery for us right now. I'm going to pick some of my favorite carrots. Normally, it's my rule, I don't pick carrots before November. And you can see why. These aren't the beautiful orange that they will be given a couple more months time, but I want to just stick some in this pot pie, so you do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna put just some carrots. I have a couple turnips in there I'll throw in too. Add a little sweetness to the to the pile. There's a turnip. I don't tend to peel my carrots. I wash them, but I like to have all those vitamins and nutrients in there, so I tend not to peel. So we're gonna chop up that parsnip and put that in. That's probably just about enough of that too. Maybe one more carrot. More carrot than parsnip ratio in there. There we go, just get that chopped. It doesn't have to be anything too small or too big. Just, just in the farm kitchen, anything goes. Just kind of throw it in there. Now for our onion, I tend to like the sweet Vidalia type of onions. You can do whatever kind you like them. Wherever I can stick a little sweetness in there, I do. So for that, I'm also just going to coarsely chop. And the rest I will end up dehydrating for our winter seasoning. So that's probably just about enough. Maybe I'll take a little bit more. Maybe just a little more. Can you tell I don't really like to follow recipes? Just kind of throw one there, what I, what I think it needs. I just, um, I'm working on our cookbook right now and it was so hard for me to actually sit down and see what amounts I actually use of things. Cause as you can see from watching me cook, that doesn't happen very often. I usually just kind of, except for my baking. You'll see when I get to the pie crust, that is very, very particular. So, I'm just gonna grab some butter from the fridge. Don't look at how messy my fridge is. <laughs> and then we're just going to cut that and we're gonna saute these veggies up. Someday, I would love to have a cow so that I can say, I'm gonna a little bit of paper there. So I can say that everything we have and everything we make, if you wanna come with me, Jacob, everything we make comes right here from the farm. That would be a wonderful thing, wouldn't it? Have it be 100% from the farm. What do you think, Jacob? Would that be great? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're just gonna get this all cut down. It's gonna take a few minutes. And while that's starting, we'll come back over here and cut up our chicken. 
because we're just making a small Popeye and because I'm gonna use these vegetables for something else, let me move those out of the way because you don't want your, your raw chicken fat to get on there because then I wouldn't be able to use them. So I'm just gonna get this chicken ready. I want big chunks. I use chicken breast here, but thigh works just as well. Actually, in my opinion, it works a little better. I like chicken thigh. It's a little more moist, a little more flavor, but breast is what we have, so that's what we're doing. And the farmer likes chicken breast over thigh, so on occasion, I like to appease them. So we're just gonna cut. Big chunk, just put that all ready. And I'll put this over here. Just wash up my hands. That's starting to sizzle. I'm gonna let that cook in. Get all those veggies nice and oh, I lost one. Lost a carrot. Scoopy will get that. We have a little uh, border collie who likes it one of those things. You could use a different type of fat here if you want. I've been known to use lard on this before. If you have lard, that would be... Actually, that's something when we have pigs in the past, that's one more way I, I can make it so that we're having more things come from our farm. We had sheep for a little while. Um, you can't make butter out of sheep milk because it's naturally homogenized, so the cream doesn't separate, so you can't make butter, which was a very sad day when I discovered that. But it makes wonderful cheese, so that made up for my lack of butter. So we're just gonna let this cook down. Now it's important, I'm going to do this video in two different parts. Uh, you won't feel the part, but I will. Um, it's important that I do uh, this filling way in advance because it needs uh, plenty of time to cool before I make the crust. You wouldn't wanna put a hot filling into your pie crust because that would start the cooking process and the pie crust would melt that butter and that would make a really soggy crust. So I wanna make sure this has time to be in my fridge and cool, so that's why I'm doing this now. All right, oh, lost one yet. All right, then goes the chicken. That chicken breast doesn't take very long to cook. That's one, one benefit of you going with a, a boneless meat. Now in a little bit, I'm going to put in flour as a thickener. Um, so for those of you who are gluten-free, I apologize that this is not gonna work for you. But then again, the pie crust isn't gonna help you either, so. Um, and we do actually have one gluten-free person in our house, you notice that I had one and a half chicken breasts because I had to cut out a half a breast for our one person who will not eat this. So you have to make it that in mind for everybody. So, no, I'm taking my hand. <laughs> You're going to eat those. All right. So, just cooking that down. I want to make sure the chicken is fairly well cooked before I. And then to this, I'm gonna add the flour as a thickener, as I said before. And then on top of that, my liquids that I put in here will be a homemade chicken stock. And I'll post a video in the future on that, how I make my homemade stock. It really does make a difference to have a nice stock for this. Um, so whenever I have uh, any bones, let's say I, I cook a whole chicken, I, then I always save the backbone. Put it in the freezer when I've got a nice amount built up, then I take that and I roast that with some vegetables in a nice roasting pan. When I say vegetables, I mean pretty much what you see here. You've got your onions, your celery, your carrot, maybe a parsnip, maybe a clove of garlic. Put it in the oven to roast, dry roast until it's nice and beautiful. And then I pour boiling water over it 
and that just releases all that flavors that might have gotten stuck on the pan. And I might use my fork to help loosen those up. And then I strain that. And that is our stock. So it adds a nice, nice dimension of flavor. And then I, then I uh, put it in containers and put it in the freezer for a time like today when I'll need it. Like I said, this is going to make a small nine inch pie. Um, so I'll have enough for the three of us to have for dinner. Like I said, the fourth will have something different. And then the farmer will have some leftover pie to take for work. I always like to try to do that if I can. I like to have a meal where he can take the leftovers and just eat that for his lunch for work. It just makes things easier. That way he doesn't have to worry about what he's gonna eat and I don't have to worry about um, getting up and making something. So I just put a little flour in there, probably a couple tablespoons to start. I'm just gonna see how that goes. I may add more, we'll, we'll see. Like I said, when I did the cookbook, it was very hard to go back and figure out exactly how much I put in because when I'm cooking, I really don't measure much. It's all a matter of look and feel and taste. But it's important when you do the flour that you let it cook. You don't want to have that raw flour taste. Now see how it's sticking on the bottom there? That's okay, and just as long as it doesn't burn, because in a minute I'm gonna put the stock in and then the milk. Actually, I use half and half. Why use milk when you can use cream? And that will help release that from the bottom. So I'm not worried that it's sticking to the bottom right now. That's just fine. All right, so now here is my stock I've been thawing. Look how beautiful and golden that is. Not completely thawed, but enough of it is that I'll for what I need. Mean. Just pour that in. Let some of that back in on there. This one out again, I'll use that for my daughter who will not be having this. She can have a nice chicken soup. So there in goes my half and half. And we're just gonna let this cook for a little bit. I'm gonna spend the time, I have a wooden spoon, I don't wanna scrape, but just kind of rub it along the bottom and let this cream and the stock do its good work of bringing up those, those tidbits that have gotten stuck on the bottom. That will add a nice flavor. Can you see those beautiful chicken fat butter, butter globules on top? That is where the good stuff is, that's a nice flavor. So we're just gonna let this go for a little bit. It's gonna stir. You can hear it kind of, and I can feel the wooden spoon kind of catching up against that flour mixture. We want to make sure that it, we catch all of that. As soon as I feel that's nice and smooth, I'm gonna go over here and we're gonna cut up our sage. The other seasoning I use in this is celery salt. You could use celery seed and salt, but might as well use celery salt. It's got both of them in it. Some pepper. Um, yeah, that's about it. So sage, celery salt, and pepper, and that will be our seasonings for this. Now in the winter, I would put my special seasoning, which is simply dried onion, dried celery leaves, and then I will put in the um, sage, dried sage. So very similar. All right, so that's all, all's released from the bottom. So I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit and let this think about cooking for a minute while I come over here and cut up my sage. I have a few leaves here. Let me grab a new knife. This other one was in my chicken. So, little secret for sage. You take them and you stack them up, and then you roll them. Just like that. And then see how I have all those? You don't want those woody stems on, so I just cut those off. And this, I just cut like this, and this makes beautiful little sage ribbons. And I don't have to worry about any of those woody stems on there. Oh, it smells hot. I wish you could smell that. It smells like I'm walking through, through a woods. Just it's lovely. Oh, nice. All right, so I'm just gonna put this right in with my chicken. Beautiful little ribbons. 
I'm going to put in a little bit of that celery salt. Believe it or not, that is that, that flavor in the chicken pot pie that you can't name. You know it's there and you know if it's missing. But what that is, is the celery. That celery seed. In fact, I've got, I let my celery from last year go to seed. It's a two year plant, so it won't seed the first year. You have to let it over winter and then the second year goes to seed. I let it go to seed and I have it all drying downstairs so I can, one of these days, say that I can make a chicken pot pie and butter completely from our farm. That would be a lovely thing to say, wouldn't it? Even the celery seed would come from here. So we're just gonna let that cook and stir just until it thickens nicely. And then when it gets nice and cooked, we're gonna stick it in the fridge to cool. Hi, welcome back. For me, it's been a couple hours. For you, it's been about one second, but my Filling has chilled. I'm now ready to make the crust. This is the crust I use on almost everything. There's a couple exceptions where I make a sweet crust, but for the most part, this is it. So let me go over it with you. I am very, as crazy and haphazard as I was with the filling, I'm opposite of that with the crust. I'm very meticulous because it's very simple ingredients, but if you mess them up, you mess it up. So I weigh the flour. And I check first, it's at five and a quarter ounces. I want a total of 19 ounces, so I'm gonna go 14 and a quarter. For those of you who don't have a scale, you can put in two cups, but I'm telling you, it does make a difference doing the scale. So, I have a little bit more then, so I'm gonna take some of that out until I get right at 14 and a quarter. All right. That's the amount of flour that I need. There you go. Thank you, Jacob. I think they see the amount of flour. All right, next is one teaspoon of just regular table salt. And I put that in. This handy tool is called a pastry blender. Let me move this out of the way because we're not going to use this anymore. And I tend to be a little claustrophobic when I start rolling this stuff out. I just mix that salt in. Next, we're going to take two sticks of cold butter and it needs to be cold because you want it to stay in individualized pieces. That is how the crust remains flaky. So you try to touch it as minimally as possible because of course our hands are warm and they don't melt the butter and we don't want that. So, get down my paper. Okay, and now I'm going to See how I'm hardly touching it with my hands? I tried to just have the knife do the work. <clears throat> Two sticks of butter seems like a lot of butter, and it is, but that's what makes it good. And you are welcome to substitute lard for any amount of this butter. There are times when I do. If I have a lot of lard around, I will do that. Um, you get maybe a flakier crust, not as much flavor as the butter. And actually the crust, um, this crust doesn't last as long. Like you wouldn't be able to have this pie after maybe like three or four days where a lard crust tends to last a bit longer. All right, now, I'm gonna use my little tool, and you do this kind of motion, a press down and up, press down and up. And I keep doing that until all that butter gets broken into little pieces. I'm keeping my knife nearby because every once in a while I'll have to scrape down my pastry blender. As you can see, I use, make a lot of pies. This is this pastry blender, I'm almost, almost due for a new one. I, it's well loved. Just keep working it until all that butter is mixed in. It's all those pieces should be individualized pieces. I'm not making a shortbread. I'm not trying to melt in the butter. I'm trying to have that butter stay 
intact, just smaller. Some people use uh, two large forks for this. Some people use their hands, which obviously I don't recommend since I'm trying to touch it minimally. And some people use um, a food processor. I have yet to try that. I do have a food processor, but I have yet to trust it with my crust because you'll see this doesn't take that much time and it makes a really nice crust. Do you see how all of those little butter chunks are in there? Almost. Good. So I'm going to move some things out of the way here. Next, we use five to six tablespoons of very cold water. Now, I start with five because you can always add more. You can't take it away, and I certainly don't want to add more flour. So I'm going to let this get cold a little bit. One. Now, when my mom used to make it, she used to have a separate little dish where she mixed the water and some of the flour butter mixture first. I, God bless her, but I don't, I don't see how that benefits it at all. So I don't, I try to eliminate steps if I, if I can. Now's when I get my hands in there. Now I'm going to mix it all up until it's one big ball. It's the beauty of an all butter crust is look how yellow it is. It's just... And this can be used, it obvious this is a savory pie. You can use it on a sweet pie, I do. This is what I use for all my fruit pies. And here, it's all come together. That's it. I have one big beautiful lump of dough. So that is gonna stay there. Let me just clean up my workspace a little bit. And my hands. I'm obviously making a top and a bottom crust. The bottom crust is going to be slightly larger than top. So I'm going to cut my dough ball almost in half, but a little bit more to the one side. This will be my bottom and that'll be my top. Now, I prefer greatly a French rolling pin. It allows me to apply pressure where I want it to be. Where a regular rolling pin I just don't feel that same sense of control. And I like control. Right, Jacob? Yep. Yep. So I take my bottom and I put in a little ball and I dust it lightly in the flour. Turn and turn. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Again, I get a little claustrophobic when it comes to that. I like to have <clears throat> lots of space. Pick it up the flour, and then I let it roll. By doing this, I tend to, not always, now that I say it, I'll probably mess it up, but I, it tends to keep it from uh, sticking to your countertop if you keep flipping it over and such like I'm doing. Now it's got a good, and by going back and forth like this, it helps it stay in that round shape that we want our pie to be. There's just something so incredibly satisfying about just the feel of rolling out a nice pie dough. Okay, right, that's probably about right. So here is my nine inch pan. To get it in, see how it's not sticking at all? Just fold it in half and you drape it over and then I unfold it. It's very important when you make a pie to let it settle in. You don't want to ever stretch it. That is what, that is why people's pies, the crust shrinks. You don't want that. That comes from stretching it. So notice I'm even kind of pushing it in a little bit. This is to prevent that shrinking from taking place. Let's see. Make sure it fills in all those little bits. Make sure it's all the way around. Okay, so that one's done. I'm just gonna move that out of the way while I roll the top. And then we'll put our filling in. Again, I make it into a little ball. 
roll it in the flour and start to roll it out. And flip it back and forth. See, it's starting to stick right there. So let me try just a little more flour. Again, we were very careful in our measuring of the flour beforehand, so we don't want to ruin that now by putting a ton of flour in it in the rolling process. So I'm not going to do that. Just enough to make a cover for my pie. But do you see how I'm moving my hands back and forth like that? That's why I love the French rolling pen. You just get all that control that you would not get with one that has the handle. So just completely different experience. So I'm to make sure I have enough to cover it. All right, that's that. Let me grab a spoon and a large fork and I can spoon in. All right, so here it is. Nice and cold. Again, you wouldn't want to put a hot filling in this. It would start to melt the butter. I certainly didn't want that. So there's a filling we made before. Nice and thick. I'm just gonna spread that all out. Okay. Now I'm gonna put my top on. Again, I fold it in half. And then I gently place it over top and unfold. Now, to make I happen to really like the flavor of my crust. Some people don't like a ton of crust. I say the more the crust, although this is a bit much over here. I might rip off a little bit. I like it. So I tend to just fold it all in. I like to have a big piece of crust that I can dip in the gravy. So I'm gonna do that. Again, this is a little bit much. And one thing my daughter Hannah came up with for that extra crust because she takes after her mama. She doesn't like to waste stuff. She takes that and she dredges it in, um, brushes a little bit of butter and then dredges it in um, cinnamon sugar and then bakes it alongside the pie and it is just a nice little treat, it's delicious. All right, so now, see I'm tucking it all. All right, now it's where I make this my own. I tend to use a big serving fork and I crimp it. I like a crimped edge, I think it has a nice comfort feel. Now, if this were a sweet pie, well, first let me, you need, the, the liquid in here is gonna get very hot. It's gonna, hot liquid creates steam. So if I don't put some holes in this, it's gonna blow the lid right off. So if you ever have a lid separate from your pie, what you've done is you haven't poked enough holes in it. So I always poke holes in mine to release some of that steam, but also to let me know what kind of pie it is. So here is a C for chicken pie. Now, if this was a sweet pie, you would see me have some cream in my hands, I would dab it on top, and I'd sprinkle some nice uh, rough sugar on there. This is not a sweet pie, this is a savory pie. So into the oven it goes. I did forget to preheat it, but I'm gonna heat it now to 425. And it goes, and we'll check on it in about 45 minutes. We'll see you then. All right, let me check and see. I think it's done. Sure enough, it is. You can tell because it doesn't look like dough anymore. You can see those nice flaky layers. It could go for another five to 10 minutes and then it would be nice and golden, but we don't have time. We have plans tonight, so we need to get eating dinner. And I hope you're eating dinner tonight with your family too. You take care.